All right, Cooking Lights, Facebook Live. We are in New York City with the Cooking Light crew at Upland in New York City. And I'm here with a good friend of mine, Chef Justin Smiley of Upland NYC. Uh, Justin's a good buddy of mine. Thanks for having us. Thanks for coming. Uh, as you can see, this is a very busy kitchen. We're going to try to talk really loud. Dinner service is about to get, begin. And uh, tonight, Justin is going to show us how to make pasta like a chef. So, Justin, let's get started. You get your pasta in boiling water. So we have a spagatini going in very heavily seasoned water. And talk louder. So, seasoned like the ocean, very salt. You only really have one chance to get the salt all the way through the noodles. So, it's important that your tank is really, really properly seasoned. So, we're going to make a very uh, simple dish today, spagatini con putarga, which is traditionally from Sardinia. Um, we're going to start by taking a little bit of olive oil. What kind of olive oil do you like to use? Uh, this is Sicilian species of olive oil. So you use the Sicilian olive oil. And we're going to microplane. One of my favorite tools in the kitchen is the microplane. And especially for like toasting things like garlic. Because we're going to toast the garlic until it basically starts to melt. Infusing the oil, creating a little bit of texture. And we're making a bath, we're making a dressing. So like dressing pasta is really no different than like trying to dress a salad, garnish a steak. We're just kind of trying to maximize and impact a lot of flavor with a very few ingredients. And so why uh, why microplane instead of a knife and mincing it up? I like it when it kind of like dissolves into the noodle. I like you'll feel flex of like this barely toasted garlic on top yeah. of the noodle. What? How do you feel, uh, how do you really feel about a garlic press? <laughs> okay, so what you just put in here? You got so we have a little bit of pepperoncino, and we dry these in house. Um, and I just think it kind of adds like we want to use kitchens that have or chilies that have a lot of florality, a good amount of heat, and a good amount of texture. You can buy a good quality, but I think it's just like one more step and one more nuance that we have. Gotcha. Um, that helps to connect to the plate. So okay, just, if you guys are just joining us on Cooking Lights Facebook Live page, we are in the kitchen with Justin Smiley, chef at Upland, New York City, uh, one of the best restaurants in the city, and the Cooking Light crew is having dinner here tonight. Justin decided to let us come in and take a, a bird's eye view of what's going on, and today he's making pasta like a, a New York City chef. So I'm going to get out of the way and let Justin take it away. All right, so you just added water, pasta water, to your pan. You just, why did you do that? So, again, so we're kind of creating this, like, garlicky batter. Uh, with a little bit of heat, and this is ultimately what's going to be the dressing. I eat the sauce for the dish, uh, and this kind of retards the cooking. If I didn't add any water or any additional liquid at this point, we'd sizzle the garlic to the point of it became a little bitter, a little acrid, kind of post nuttiness. Yeah. Um, so at this point, uh, we're just going to kind of chill a little bit until the noodles are done cooking. Okay. Give it another three and a half minutes. Yeah. Um, and you know, like when cooking pasta and with working in water, whether you're working on a stove at home or working in a professional tank, yeah. you want to kind of like move the noodle around a little bit in the bath, just to ensure even cooking. So this is how you, you cook pasta by big batches in a, in a restaurant kitchen. Exactly. Um, and tell us about the saltiness factor in the water. How salty do you like it? Like the sea, like yeah. the Jersey Shore. Salty like your language? Salty like my language. Okay, all right, so let's let's pull back for a second. I want you guys to see how busy this kitchen is. They're getting ready for service. They're busy every night, they're jam-packed, and everybody here uh, is getting their stations ready. So uh, this is called the pass right here, looking out into the dining room. Uh, this is where the orders come in. To your left, oh, yeah, the pizza oven, pizza station. Right here is where all the appetizers are done. And this kitchen is awesome. Grills over there, grill station. You see that big furry object right there? That's a big maitake mushroom. That goes in the deep fryer. And that's an appetizer. And then Justin's over here on the saute station. This is called a flat top right here. It's a French range and everything here is hot. We got Justin's pasta station here, more saute. And then everything cold, Gardman J is over here. This is where all the salads are coming off where all the desserts are coming off in the kitchen. And uh, it looks really busy right now, and it is, but everybody's got a job, and it's very well, well orchestrated, very well organized. And um, it's almost ready, it's almost time to eat. So let's get to it. So you took your pasta out. You took the pasta out, and it's important, again, you want to stir the pasta as it's cooking, and you know, even if you're cooking in a pot at home, a basket like this is tremendously helpful. You just turn around, encourage good cooking. 
once it's out and you want to taste early and taste often, um, you kind of get one chance to do this right. So we have the water, the oil, and I kind of use, I like using tweezers, and I'm not really a tweezer chef, but I do like what it kind of allows you to aerate, mix, and like you're not overly whipping, because the botarga, once we add that, will have a tendency to kind of clump. You've kind of become a tweezer chef, haven't you? I have become a little bit of a tweezer chef. Um, and I love these bowls, these pots that Mobiel makes. It's kind of like working in a bowl. Like a lot of the things pots we make here are out of bowls. Take a little bit of parsley. A little bit of lemon. And this is Botargi de Mujini, which is the third row sack of the gray mullet. And this is going to be the fat, the salinity, the brininess, the overall texture. And it kind of has a, a really buttery, ever so slightly like waxy texture. And this is what's going to help kind of cream out the sauce. Can you hold it up so we can see it? Let's see what it looks like. So tell us what this is again. So that's the steam of the gray mullet that's been cured with a little bit of salt, pressed, and then air dried. And you can see we're starting to mix. So again, like pasta is a very living thing. And you want to be able to adjust with a little bit of water as you go. So make sure that it just kind of basically sits right on top of that noodle. And, you know, good pasta cooking is really about starch management. So, I think the trick for the habit that's bad that a lot of young folks do, or people at home, is they'll add a lot more fat than they really need. If you cook your noodle properly, if you manage the starch, and you can see I have no fat other than the olive oil we just put in, and you can see how creamy it's already gotten. So that's the protein that's in the actual mullet roe. So and I noticed starch. you added more pasta water here a minute ago. So I gotta get to the texture that I want, and I want it to barely just basically just rest on top of the noodle. So a little more olive oil and again you don't need cheese you don't need butter to make a really creamy pasta and as it is in pot you want to kind of leave it like this very natural kind of flow very loose and the texture okay so now you're going to plate your pasta show us how you, you plate right, like a pro so it's really just important to kind of get it and i don't like pasta that's superly super twisted Kind of like just like very laid in the bowl, very naturally. They so think if you twist it too much, the tendency is that you get this very tight, kind of clumpy pasta. A little more of the roe on top. So more batarga at the end. More batarga at the end. See how creamy that is? There's no butter in there at all. It's all the, the starchiness from the pasta water and from the pasta itself, a little bit of olive oil, and the fat from the batarga. And like the easy tell is like at the bottom of the pot, you're dragging your feet. And you can see how it's kind of nappe, or it'll draw like a current line. And that's how you know you've got a creamy and open style like clumpy. We're gonna let this cool down for a second. Uh, tell us about the menu tonight. What are you super psyched about right now? You're a seasonal cook. You shop from the farmers markets. Uh, what are you really excited right now, ingredient-wise? You know, I think the misconception in New York City is that spring happens like it does other places in the country. You know, we don't see our first local English peas until June. Right, right. Um, so we're just kind of getting like the peas. We're getting the pea tendrils right now. First round of cherries from California and some stone fruit. So it's late spring in, in New York City right now, where it might be summer. Summer for sure. Yeah. yeah. Like Berkeley, yeah. California, yeah. absolutely. Awesome. Uh, so if you're eating one thing on the menu tonight, what do you eat? Out of the quail with the next Okay. Well, let's get into this pasta here. Let's do it. Bring it up here. Flats. Mine. Let you go first. All right. Mark, look at my talking. 
it's still so it's still very loose right now. Like it's not really clumpy, it's not like put together. It's still very light. Um, and that's kind of like that balanced noodle in a big bite. Grindy, fatty, creamy, delicious. All right, man. Thank you for uh, showing us how it's done. Justin Smiley, Shots in the City, one of the most beautiful two. Cooking Light is eating here tonight. And uh, thank you for showing us how to make pasta like a New York City chef, man. We appreciate it. Let's take a quick look at the, uh, at the dining room. It's filling up, so we need to get the hell out of here.